Okay, question five. An energy question by the looks of it. So, figure ten shows the stages of an extreme sport called human catapult. The person lies in a cradle which is held to the ground. The cradle is released. The person is launched vertically into the air by an elastic rope. The person then parachutes back to the ground. Looks pretty cool, actually. I think I'd give that a go. <laughs> Okay, so I'll be honest, I'm re-recording this um, part of the answer because the first time I did it, I made a silly mistake and also uh, probably went into a bit too much depth. So uh, as part of my commitment to having integrity and letting you see um, the mistakes I make as well, I'll put the that section at the end of the video so you can watch it if you want to. Uh, but let's, uh, for me, start again. So question five is about energy. Let's read it. Um, Figure 10 shows the stages of an extreme sport called human catapult. A person lies in a cradle, it's held to the ground, the cradle is released, the person is launched vertically into the air by an elastic rope, and the person then parachutes back to the ground. So, sounds like a lot of fun. I'm into that type of stuff. Position A, there is a store of elastic potential energy, so we have elastic potential energy at position A. Position C is the person's maximum height, maximum height. Describe the energy transfers going from A to B to C. Okay, so this is what we have to do for three marks. Describe the energy transfers going from A to B to C. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just think about, well, at position A, he's not moving, or the person is not moving. The elastic band is stretched. I think that it's fair to say they have elastic potential energy here, elastic potential energy. At position C, they're at their maximum height. They're no longer moving, so that would be gravitational potential energy. At position B, and this is where I made my mistake last time, at position B you can think about it like this. So this pencil, it gets accelerated upwards, right? Now, if I accelerate it upwards, it leaves my hand, and as it leaves my hand, it's going at its maximum velocity. So it's going to have very high kinetic energy just as it leaves my hand, and it goes up and up and up and slows down, slows down, slows down. This is the kinetic energy getting converted back into GPE, sorry, as it goes higher and higher and higher. And, and the kinetic energy store gets less and less and less, and the GPE store gets larger and larger and larger until it stops moving and there's no kinetic energy, and um, and you have maximum gravitational potential energy. And if you carry it on, it falls back down again, and the GPE gets converted back into kinetic energy, etc. We don't need to go that far because it tells us to stop at C, basically, in the question. Um, so... The, question, the mistake I made last time was I just said elastic strain energy got converted into kinetic energy, but in fact it gets converted into kinetic energy at this point plus some GPE. Because the person is a little bit higher off the ground, they've gained some height uh, that they didn't have before. So to, to hit the marking points, I think we need to say, and I will have another last check of the marks here, I don't want to make a mistake again. Yeah, so between A and B, and B, so going from this position to this position, so going, oh, I'd better start with a capital letter, keep things good grammar. So going from A to B, uh, elastic strain energy, elastic energy, I'm going to just use abbreviations because my handwriting is so terrible and it slows me down. Elastic energy gets converted is converted to GPE and KE at position B. So, okay. So from position B to C, um, kinetic energy is converted to. So kinetic energy will be converted to GPE. This is uh, position B. They carry on going up, dot, 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 dot. But as they go up, they're getting slower and slower and slower. And by the, get to this, by the time they get to this point, they're not moving at all. Therefore, no um, kinetic energy. Now, the questions usually tell you to ignore air resistance, and it doesn't mention anything about that here. So there isn't. The, that's worth one mark. That's worth one mark. And the final mark is for mentioning something to do with air resistance. So during this entire time, they go from A to C, they're moving through the air, displacing the air, doing work against the air. So let's just say for sake of argument 
that they started with 100 joules of energy. Conservation of energy tells us they should end with 100 joules of energy. But it might not necessarily be all in the GPE store. It might be in thermal as well, the thermal of the air. So it could be that you get, well, it would be the case in, in, in an atmosphere that if you started with 100 joules of elastic strain energy, you would definitely end with 100 joules of energy. It just wouldn't all be in the GPE store. You'd get some um, dissipators heat due to friction with the air. So for the final marking point, which I think is a little bit unfair of the AQA because they didn't mention consider air resistance, which would be fair. I mean, even in the A-levels they do that. So for the final marking point, you need to mention something about um, friction with the air means that some um, energy energy is dissipated as heat. Okay, and I think that would be enough to get all the marks to that section. In the last few meters of his descent during the parachute stage, so the person goes up, comes back down again with their parachute open, right? Terrible drawing of a parachute. Right? They travel at terminal velocity. Explain why. Okay, so the air resistance must be equal to weight. Therefore, forces being balanced, velocity remains constant. Okay, so basically, if you jump out of an airplane or something like that and you fall, as you fall, air resistance starts pushing up more and more and more and more until the air resistance, the wind pushing on you is so strong, it's actually pushing up as hard as you're being pulled down. And at that point, Newton's first law comes into play, um, and a body in motion remains in motion with the same speed in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. And there is no unbalanced force because your weight is equal to the drag or air resistance force. Right, next step. Next bit. When, a, when stretched in position A, the elastic rope stores all that energy, 25,000 joules. The elastic rope behaves like a spring with a spring constant of 125 newtons per meter. Calculate the extension of the elastic rope. Use the physics equation sheet to help you. Right. So go through the physics equation sheet and try and find something with a spring and energy. No. No. N Force, maybe. No, it's not. Elastic potential energy, spring constant extension. Right, it's probably that one. In fact, it is that one. But you would still go through and just check. No, 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 no. Okay? So, we're using that one. Um, now, hmm, having thought about this, I think the easiest method for somebody who's not strong with algebra is to just sub all the numbers they can in, calculate what they can calculate, then rearrange for the missing answer. So I'm going to follow that method now. If I was doing this for a high level group or for my A level group, I would not do it like this, but for this for this situation, I think it is the appropriate method. So elastic energy, they're using that notation, equals a half times K, the spring constant, times the extension squared. Right, sub all the numbers we have in 25,000 equals a half times 125 times e squared. And it's e that I'm looking for. Calculate what I can calculate. Right, a half times 120, a half times 125, 125 times 0 0.5, 6 equals 62.5 times e squared is equal to 25,000. Right, now the 62.5 is what I need to move. It's times me on this side, so if I take that and divide both sides by it, I can get rid of it. Right, so I can do 25,000 divided by 62.5 will equal e squared. 25, 1, 2, 3 divided by that answer gives me 400. So 400 equals e squared. Now get rid of the square. Root both sides. Square, well, that will cancel that off. Square root of 400, I think, is 20. Square root of 400 is 20, so the extension of the rope must have been 20 meters. And this seems kind of right. Seems about right for the size of that thing, 20 meters. But it's a scary ride, scary 20 meters. Right, finally, the vertical velocity of the person at position B in figure 10 is 26 meters per second. 
the vertical velocity at c is zero. Calculate the distance between position b and c. Use the physics equation sheet. Mm-hmm. Right, so essentially we are being given the magnitude of the velocity right here. And we're told they get to here at zero. So let's just go back and think about our energy transformations. We've gone from kinetic energy being converted into GPE. In these questions we're going to ignore air resistance if it doesn't exist. So whatever kinetic energy they had will be equal to whatever GPE they get. So I can say that from is it on the equation sheet? No, you don't get given the energy ones. So the kinetic energy equation you need to know, half mv squared, will be equal to the gravitational potential energy that this thing gains, which will be mgh. Right? Now the person's mass isn't going to change throughout unless they have an accident. Woohoo! Right, you know what I'm talking about, a brown trouser moment, but their mass remains constant, let's just assume that. So since its mass is the same on both sides, I can cancel. Um, I'm trying to work out the height, right? The distance travelled between B and C. So if I divide both, I want to get the H. So if I've got basically V squared over 2, because that's times by half, it's the same thing, will be equal to GH. Divide both sides by G. Right, get the g over to this side. Gets me v squared over 2g. Now let's just sub the numbers in. 26 squared divided by 2 times 9.81, which is acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so 26 squared. This is an area, this is an option where you may mess up with bod mass. 26 squared is 676. 676. 76 divided by. 676 divided by. 2 in brackets times 9.81 close brackets equals 34 34.45 I'll leave it at 34 meters okay one quick check of the mark scheme to see that I haven't gone crazy okay I've got 20 meters for that one 34 meters for that one so it looks like we're on to a winner. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, and share. Right, and just quickly, um, when I originally did this question, I did it using uh, the method on the left. But just to show you that it's possible to do it another way, the equation sheet gives you an equation which is final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared equals 2 times acceleration times distance. V squared minus U squared equals 2AS. So if we started with V squared minus U squared equals 2AS, um, we're being asked for the distance, but I'm going to follow my normal rules um, for uh, for students. Uh, sub the numbers first, because you get a mark for subbing the numbers. So V, the initial velocity, sorry, what is uh, U's initial velocity? Yeah, so V is the final velocity, so it's going to be 0 squared minus initial velocity squared, 26 squared, is equal to 2 times the acceleration. Now, if this thing is going up and then coming back down again, the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, right? Any object in free fall accelerates at 9.81 meters per second squared on Earth, initially anyway, until you know air resistance gets uh, large enough to be considered. So 2 times 9.81 times s, what I'm looking for. So what I've said in the past left my calculator. What I've said in the past is sub the numbers in Man, the kids didn't make my calculator um, what I've said in the past is sub the numbers in and then uh, calculate what you can calculate. 0 squared is 0. 26 squared is what? Uh, 26 and 26 is 6, 7, 6 is equal to 2 times 9.81. So let's get 2 times 9.81. 2 times 9.81 gets us to 19.62 times s. So now most students should be able to rearrange this quite straightforwardly. To get s, you, um, you're timesing by 19.6 here. So divide both sides by 19.6. 6, 7, 6 divided by 19.6 should give us s. So Uh, 6, 7, 6 divided by 
gets me 34.454 and so on and I will just round that to 34.5 meters okay in position A there is a store of elastic energy so right here we've got elastic strain energy if you want to call it that position C is the person's max height straight away I'm thinking GPE maximum gravitational potential energy Describe the energy transfers position from position A through position B to position C. All right. So we've just got to go from position A to B to C. Okay. So at position A, we've got max strain. Okay. Position B, it looks like the spring is stopped, accelerating the person up. Right. So we've emptied the GP. Sorry, the strain energy store, and now the person is moving at maximum velocity, maximum kinetic energy, right? Way to imagine this, you see this pen, right? You, they get whacked up, they leave, and it's the instant they are leaving the hand. The instant they're leaving the hand, they're moving their fastest, and as they're going up, they're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and that would be, that would be the kinetic energy being converted into gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy so right at the top we've got max GPE okay so I would just start with start with when spring so it's not a spring it's elastic isn't it when elastic is fully stretched we have a store of elastic strain Elastic strain energy, which, sorry, not which, right. Now, the elastic band, the elastic, the elastic does work, work on the person, on the person, accelerating them, accelerating them, converting, converting. Elastic strain, ES, I'll just do abbreviations for now, ES, into KE, kinetic energy, full stop. At B, capital at B, position B, all elastic strain is converted into KE. Right. Then the person just continues to shoot up in the air, and gravity does work converting kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy because the gravity is slowing you down, converting that G that Ke into Gp. So from this point on on um, kinetic energy is converted into gravitational potential, potential energy energy right okay I've probably gone a bit overboard with my explanation with that but um, the basics are you start with max strain energy which converts into kinetic energy which then gets converted into GP looking at it it's only worth three marks so the me talking about work being done that's pushing it a little bit higher level but you never know it can come up